Hello, I'm Andy Copping, and you're listening to MMH, the home of rock radio. Ah, how's lockdown been? Um, uh, very bizarre, uh, to be honest. Um, th- the first kind of two or three weeks uh, seemed to go really, really slowly. But then when you kind of look and we're nine, ten weeks or more into this, um, you know, 11 weeks, it's, it's just gone. It seems to have gone really, really quickly. And, and the one thing about um, humans, we have a way of adapting to our surroundings. So we were very used to the hustle and bustle. And for me, I mean, I live in Lincolnshire. Uh, mm. but the, you know, obviously the bulk of my work is based in London. Um, so, you know, traveling down there, work, working every day uh, in the office, full of people to literally uh, now sitting at home, Zoom calls, Skype calls, phone calls, conference call. I mean, it's very odd, but, you you know, kind of used to it now. Yeah, I suppose you just have to kind of adapt to it, don't you? um... Yeah, yeah, it's just coping with the surroundings. I mean, work has been... uh, perilously busy Mm. um obviously we've had to cancel and reschedule a number of shows number of tours um festivals obviously uh down low we had to make the decision um to uh pull that down and i was in denial for um a period of time i mean when when this whole thing kind of really started which was I guess the beginning of March, mm. uh, we were all thinking, well, yeah, we're going to lose shows in March and we'll probably lose a little bit of April. Um, but May will be okay and yeah. festivals will be all right. And then, you know, as time went on, you started to realize that, um, you know, this, this thing was going to affect us um, for a much longer term. And people were saying to me, well, you'll be cancelling download. No, no download's still going ahead. Um, And then I just woke up one day and just realised, you know, why am I kidding myself? And there's nothing wrong with being optimistic and, um, you know, just uh, being positive. But I just had to really think about what was happening. Uh, We had to think about, you know, the many thousands of people that come um, to download every year, and you know we 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 ultimately made the decision alongside the local authority that um, it was it just wasn't going to happen. There were conversations about possibly even moving it to later in the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I personally wasn't um, in too much favour of that. Um, I just kind of felt if we were going to lose June. Uh, we were going to lose June and then we've just got to look forward to uh, next year. And obviously seeing how things have developed and yeah. obviously later in the year, had we done it in um, late, late August, early September, then it wouldn't have happened to them then either. So mm. yeah, it was, it was a tough decision, but it was the right decision. Um, very hard, um, yeah. you know, to, to do what we've done, but um along with all the other festivals around the world that have, have you know suffered the same consequence um we've just got to you know pack it down and 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 get ready for next year yeah no yeah no absolutely um but download tv just had their kind of big lineup announcement um still with a really impressive list of, of bands that are still getting involved um but going from download to kind of like an online festival what was that kind of process to actually booking of being like right okay these you know between you and the bands getting involved kind of what was that process well the, the i kept thinking that about the the community that we have at, at download which is fiercely loyal mm. uh, the uh just kind of the support uh, that we've had from the fans right from the very beginning um has been unprecedented uh, and that has, has continued to do so ever since we started in 2003. And we built up, you know, fan forums, the website, um, the chat rooms, 
just everything that we've done and obviously as social media has become more prevalent mm. um we've interacted with the fans right from the beginning um and we've always listened to them uh, not just about the bands that we bought but the way the festival is set out pricing food car park camping after hours entertainment anything at all where um the fan which is um, you know, we don't exist without those, um, has something, you know, um, quantifiable to say, um, you know, we're listening and we have made changes to the festival because of that. Now, knowing that we've got that community, I was thinking we've got to, surely there's something that we can come up with and um, between myself uh, and the team, um you know, we was going to and fro about what ideas that we could do. And ultimately we, we settled on, you know, we should do some kind of TV programming, get the artists involved. There's a, a number of the acts that have played download over the years that we're going to be playing in 2020 that we've got footage from. Um, could we get them uh, bands to give us shout outs, interviews, mm. uh, maybe some new material. Um, and as we've, kind of, you know, dug deep and there's a number of us on this. I think there's a, about 15 to 20 people altogether working on Download TV. Um, we've come up with a huge amount of content and some of it um, incredible. Uh, I'm Maiden, who are going to give us an hour's worth of content. Uh, some of the footage has never been seen before. Yeah. Uh, there's footage from previous downloads uh, and previous uh, Monsters of Rock. There's also um, some other bits and pieces that they're giving us, which is incredible because we know that the Iron Maiden fan base is huge and to get exclusive footage from them is incredible. Yeah. Uh, System yeah. of a Down have like given us seven songs from um, uh, over the different years that we've had at, uh, at download. Um, Kiss has uh, given us like four songs um, and it, it, it's truly remarkable. I mean, we actually found an interview from 2005 with System of a Down and people will see it when they watch um, the TV of uh, 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 John the drummer being interviewed in 2005 and being asked about Download and Donington and he said, oh, there's so many great memories from um this this festival you know back in the day uh i maiden and kiss played here well fast forward to 2020 yeah. and system of a down going to be playing with kiss and i maiden yeah and they were the only two bands that he named and then 15 years later they were going to be uh playing with them so you know that that was you know uh, quite um uh, jaw dropping just to you know hear that but yeah. again the, the content that we've got from all different sources we've got fans giving us content uh we've dug through some old stories um we've tried to make a proper you know tv uh, program there's going to be three of them over the download weekend friday saturday sunday yeah. um and um, and it will be it just for once this is not going to be recorded this is not something that's going to be played down the line this is a um, just a, a one chance of, of, of seeing these TV programs. And of course, um, we're actively encouraging donating to the NHS charities because um, obviously this footage you're watching is for free, but it's special. So, you know, we're, we'd like people to make a, a contribution to NHS charities. Um, bear in mind, you know, obviously what's going on. Yeah, so um, is there to kind of expect a sort of, obviously because you've got programmes, you've sold the programmes out already, but um, is there an actual kind of structure? Because obviously it's on YouTube, so um, with all of these uh, interviews and then the music and stuff, is there a structure to it or is it uh, during this amount of time I can go in when I want and watch it and it won't oh, be? Yeah, I mean, you can go on at... at... Uh, any time, any time. But if you go on half an hour into the program, you won't be able to see the previous half hour. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's going out 
as I say, just uh, um, one time for anything between two and three hours a day. Mm. Um, obviously not being um, recorded. So, yeah, we're, we're obviously, we're hoping that we've put some really good programs together that uh, people are going to enjoy watching. We've been encouraging people to, you know, set up their tents and stuff in the back garden. Hopefully the Wi-Fi will reach out there. I know <laughs> lots of people will be watching on the phones and stuff. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, just get, getting into the uh, festival experience and for, you know, two, three hours a day over the download weekend, you, you can um, see, uh, you know, a, a, a number of the bands that we're going to be playing over that weekend. We've got one or two acts that have played in previous years that have given us footage as well. It's yeah. mostly focused on um, what the lineup was in uh, 2020. Yeah. But uh, there's, there's some other really good, some of the interviews are, are really good with, with um, one or two famous people um, that are huge download fans um, that you'll that you'll get to see and what download means to them yeah. um, which really opens up what the download community is all about. Yeah, and I like as well that you guys have also booked like some of these kind of popular online personas like Bosch, and you're still yeah. doing the NXT and stuff. Yeah. And I think that's really cool. It just really yeah. gives that extra download feel, doesn't it? Oh no, for sure. I mean, the you know the NXT team have been fantastic uh, working with us, um, and you know allowing us uh, footage and and interviews and what have you. And that's hugely important to just add some extra flavour and some extra colour to uh, the overall programming. What we didn't want is okay. Here's just a load of bands playing. We wanted to intersperse it with. Uh, interviews and break things up a little bit. Yeah, I'm fully aware that not everybody is a fan of a certain band, but you know, if you're watching um, a little bit of that artist and then you know that there's probably going to be a video coming through or an interview with another act or some interaction with uh, the fans, that's ultimately what we wanted to do to make, make these shows uh, watchable and hopefully they will be. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, well, with regards to maybe forward thinking a bit to 2021, um, have you been considering at all maybe how you might deal with people's anxieties of returning to such a large scale event kind of after such a lockdown? Um, to be honest with you, that's at the foremost of our minds, really. Um, I myself am nervous of uh, what's going to happen you know, I'm paranoid when I go out. Um, I, you kind of look at people and you're thinking, well, they're not really social distancing as much as I would like them to be. Yeah. Obviously, as time passes, that will ease. And I think people's uh, confidence will return. Mm. Um, we're certainly looking at uh, the different ways um, of ensuring people's safety mental health just their just their assurances that everything's being okay whether it's cleanliness whether it's you know um taking people's temperatures just uh, and, and and i'm talking to you about this now at the the end of may and things are going to change rapidly between now and and when download uh, 21 um happens and hopefully for the positive. But I think that we're all going to look very, very differently about how we go to shows, how we go to restaurants, how we go to cinemas, how we go to festivals. It's all going to, um, you know, uh, change and be very different to uh, what we all remembered, remembered it as. Um, and I think that, you know, once we've gone through all those different procedures and the way that we handle that, um, a, a normality will prevail. Um, you know, the, the live industry um, or entertainment industry had to make some radical changes following the Ariana Grande concert in yeah. Manchester from a security point of view. Um, and this, um, you know, what we've got with, with COVID-19 and any other kind of illnesses, mm. um, et cetera, 
um, down the line is that we, we're going to have to make um, those kind of radical changes that, that happened after uh, the Manchester atrocity. So, you know, I think people nowadays uh, are far more uh, accept, you know, um, they accept they might, it might be a little bit longer getting into events, into shows, um, et cetera. And we do, we've all just got to, you know, knuckle down, understand what has happened, what will be happening in the future. Um, and fingers crossed, we'll get back to enjoying live shows, live concerts, festivals, um, so, you know, much sooner uh, than later. I mean, I know the bands, the bands that I talk to are desperate to get out and mm. start touring again. Um, you know, it's a, 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 it's a massive source of income for them. And in some cases, the only source of income, but just the fact of being out and playing for the fans and, um, you know, just seeing the whites of the eyes of the audience yeah. again, uh, is something that, you know, these bands are desperate to do. And, and obviously we want to help them do that. Yeah, and I mean, obviously there's the, the downsides, but do you think that um, being kind of forced into adapting um, from kind of like a brick concert, brick um, festival to having to go online has actually maybe been a positive thing in terms of developing the music and events industries? Maybe um, a bit prematurely than it would have happened? Probably. I mean, I think, you know... Um, Acts that have been performing their shows at home and uh, bands in particular where they're in their individual homes and that they, they've been doing songs and shows and what have you. Um, I think that has been, it's been fantastic. Um, we've got to be careful that that doesn't become uh, a bit too boring. You've got to have something else that, uh, is going to excite people. You know, somebody just mm -hmm. announcing, oh, I'm going to be doing a concert from home. Here we are uh, three months in, people kind of going, oh, another one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's great that it's there. I think that there needs to be some kind of added value. Um, I'd, I'd, one or two that I've watched, and I've, which I thought have been really good, with artists in particular, um, where they're, they're playing a song and then they'll talk to the audience um, that's watching about how that song came about, why they wrote it. Um, was it something that they wrote many, many years ago and it sat on a shelf and they revisited it? Or was it a song about a particular moment in, in, uh, in their life when they were growing up? Was it part of, you know, was it to do with a relationship? And hearing those things... And that interaction, I think, is, you know, really, really, really good for, for fans. Um, but, I, you know, nothing can beat the thrill of, you know, seeing something live and watching, you know, being there and, and being with your friends and just, you know, the, the, the sweat, the atmosphere, the lights... Um, you know, the pyro, the video, all the other different things. The, uh, those live shows uh, are never, you know, you're never going to be able to replicate that. Um, and although what's happening online is great and it's keeping us all occupied, because, of course, uh, for the most part, we're all stuck in our homes. But, um, you know, l an actual live show itself is always going to is always going to beat that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Ramstein is a good example of <laughs> totally, totally. And there's many, many bands. You look at a, you know, a, 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 a Slipknot, a Metallica, all of these, all of these bands. I mean, most most acts is, you know, you 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 need to be there. You need to be right in the, you know, the the, the, the build up before they walk out on stage and yeah. all of that stuff. I mean, the you know the li the live show experience is just something that can't be replicated yeah no absolutely um well i mean downloads had like such a good run with um headlines like you had tool last year just 
re, re kind of come out of the ashes so to speak um but uh, when when do you predict that festivals will see new headliners emerge for the rock and metal scene um when will the next generation kind of be stepping up well i think they i think they're coming now to be fair um it's hard for festivals when you've got, you know, you've got to get three headliners every year. You're always going to get repeats. Mm. Um, and then, you know, the new acts that come through. If I think of, you know, what I've done in recent years uh, with, with Download, with a, uh, Avenged Sevenfold, what I did with Slipknot, um, obviously we, you know, we, we took the punt, uh, years ago with a prodigy, uh, Biffy Clyro, um, a few years ago. And, you know, there are a number of acts out there that are right on the verge of becoming bona fide headliners, um, whether that's, you know, uh, Fallout Boy, Paramore, Partway Drive, um, Bring Me The Horizon, uh, there's 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 a number of acts out there that I know I haven't had as a headliner yet, but uh, potentially, you know, they they could be a headliner of the future. Alter Bridge, a day to remember. Um, there's there's many of them, so they're just on the cusp, and uh, we're we're slowly getting there. One thing that we do want is we we need the industry and particularly the fans to um, uh, accept and um, embrace. Uh, what's happening you know when i've put new headliners on in the past i've taken quite a bit of verbal abuse um and particularly online where people are going why have you put that headliner there's no way that they're, they're a headlining act I had that with Avenged sevenfold i had that with um slipknot um you know when we first uh moved them up to headline status um you know we've we've got to be bringing bands through um, and it's important that, you know, the festival goer or the ticket buyer also, you know, really does understand, accept and embrace what is happening and actually champion, you know, this new breed of act that, that uh, comes through for festivals. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, just lastly, I guess, is there anything that you'd like to say to your fellow downloaders before the, the big weekend? Um, well, Listen, just thank you for hanging in. Um, always appreciate the support. We've never, ever taken it for granted. Um, we will be back. Uh, obviously, you know, we've got a year to go, um, uh, but we hope to be back bigger uh, and stronger next year. Um, hope everybody's well, everybody's safe. Um, don't do anything stupid. Let's get through this. Please enjoy the download uh, TV. We've made it specifically uh, for you guys and to get all the acts involved and everybody involved with, with the TV. A big thank you to them as well. They wanted to uh, do something for the download fans. So, yeah, just uh, stay safe, stay healthy and uh, look forward to seeing you all next year. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Andy, for your time. Oh, no problem. All right. <laughs> all the best.